Hello and welcome to another modeling video. Today is a tutorial on salt weathering. This is an easy technique that can be used through airbrushing or spray cans and can create a really realistic paint chipping or rust effect. I applied this technique to my 172nd Hasegawa Zero though throughout this tutorial I'm going to show you how to apply it to larger scale mecha kits. Realistically, you can use this technique on any type of modeling. This is a shovel from my backyard showing what the effect looks like in real life. Not much different between the model. I'll be applying this technique on my high grade ball. It is primed and coated in Tamiya silver. I've allowed a week for the paint to fully mature and harden as this technique could damage the paint itself and applied a overcoat of clear just in case. I have extremely fine chicken salt and hairspray for this technique. You can use a variety of different type of salt as rock salt and fine salt mixed together can create interesting effects and hairspray preferably in the pump bottle and not the aerosol can. First cover the intended area with hairspray and sprinkle the salt on to how you desire the effect to be. Don't be afraid to brush away excess salt if you feel there is too much. Allow the hair dryer to fully dry before you apply a coat of paint and do not threat that the hair dryer underneath a layer of paint will weaken or damage your paintwork. You are free to use any type of paint as long as through an airbrush or spray can and try to apply the paint as thinly as possible to prevent too much buildup of paint and difficulty removing the salt, particularly if you're using extremely fine salt. I chose to use enamel because it can be applied quite thin and it is quite strong. This technique was originally discovered in Fine Scale Modeler magazine for military modelers painting World War II aircraft. It originally incorporated water to make the salt stick, but the salt would eventually blow off from aerosol or airbrush air. Good thing about the head spray is it actually keeps the salt glued on until you wish to remove it. This technique is also effective with paint effects such as pre-shading or weathering before you remove the salt. Once you applied the paint on top of the salt and hairspray, make sure to allow the maximum amount of drying time so when you do remove the salt it will not damage the paintwork too much. Of course when removing the salt a little scratching and wear will occur but just write it off as the effect of the technique. We are done and left with a paint scheme with a lot of bumps or texture which at this stage does look a little funny. To remove the salt, it's as simple as rubbing your finger across the surface and removing it. You can also remove it by sticking tape around the surface and pulling up or blue tack. It is very important for the effect to remove all the salt as salt remnants can leave your finish to look bumpy and a little unrealistic. This concludes the tutorial. I'll remind you that you're able to use whatever color you desire as the top and undercoat and this does not have to be paint chipping or rust. You can treat it as some sort of camouflage or a paint um, wearing out to the primer. This technique also works extremely well in conjunction with other weathering techniques and it builds up the effect of it being worn material either in the elements or out of space. Thank you for watching and until next time I hope this inspires you to try this on your models.